All right, so welcome everyone to our online Bible study. We certainly uh, welcome you. Thank you for being a part of this uh, experience. I certainly hope everybody is enjoying it, um, uh, enjoying this platform, the fact that we are able to still have the Bible study and we're also able to see each other, certainly keeping everybody in prayer uh, during this pandemic. Uh, but without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this over to our pastor, uh, Pastor Ham. So Pastor Ham, you can go ahead and I'll uh, take it away. Uh, good evening to all of you, by the way, of uh, Zoom and by the way of our online. Um, uh, we certainly thank God uh, for your presence tonight. And uh, before we begin our study, uh, let's have a word of prayer. And Father, we thank you for all that you have done for us through Jesus, who is the Christ. You have made him to be for us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification and redemption and because of his finished work on the cross we have been accepted in the beloved and we thank thee for all of those who have joined us by way of zoom and who have joined us by way of online uh, we thank thee we thank thee for each one and we pray that you will bless uh, each one bless homes we do know that the holy spirit is the is the divine teacher and we pray that he will continue to open up our understanding that we may understand the scriptures and I pray tonight that all that shall be said and done will be pleasing in your sight and that it will bring you glory and honor. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, the last time that we were together, uh, we looked at the tasting of the wine by the governor and the talking about the wine by the governor. Now, if you look at St. John uh, chapter number two and uh, look at verse number nine, St. John chapter number two and verse nine. I give you time to turn to it if you haven't gotten there yet. Uh, St. John chapter number two and verse nine. And of course, it says in that verse, when the ruler of the feast or the governor of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. So we see in verse number uh, nine, uh, the tasting of the wine by the governor caused him to realize that this new wine, this new wine was superior to the wine that had been served earlier at the feast. And I'm not going to go through all of that that I went through last uh, week. I'm just uh, giving you a point there. Once again, the tasting of the wine by the governor or the ruler caused him to realize that this new wine was superior to the wine that had been served earlier at the feast. And then of course, we looked at the talking about the wine by the governor, the talking about the wine by the governor. I'm just going to uh, make a statement here and then we're gonna move on. Uh, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and note what he says, and saith unto him, every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, than that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. And so to move on uh, from that, uh, tonight we want to deal with several matters about this talking by the governor about the miracle wine. We want to deal with several matters, with several matters. 
about this talking by the governor about the miracle wine. Now these two matters, these two matters concern the character of the wine and the character of the world. So once again, we're beginning here tonight. We want to deal with several matters about this talking by the governor about the miracle wine. These matters, these two matters concern the character of the wine and the character of the world the character of the wine and the character of the world. So let's begin with the character of the wine, the character of the wine. Question, did Christ by this miracle make wine as we know it today? Did Christ, did Jesus, by this miracle, by this miracle, make wine as we know it today? Does his making water into wine sanction social drinking today? Once again, did Christ, by this miracle, make wine as we know it today? Or does his making water into wine sanction social drinking today? Well, the answer to both of these questions is a firm no. The answer to both of these questions is a firm no. You see, our wines today are far different than the wine made by Christ and those normally drunk by people in that day. Once again, our wines today are far different, are far different than the wine made by Christ and those normally drunk by people in that day. You see, uh, the wine in Christ's day was not branded wine. The wine in Christ's day was not branded wine, nor drugged wine, nor wine compounded of various substances, such as we drink in this land of America. So once again, the wine in Christ's day or in Jesus' day was not branded wine, nor drugged wine, nor wine compounded of various substances such as we drink in this land. So, what we have to understand is that the common wine, the common wine drunk in Palestine was that which was the simple juice of the grape. And that's so very important for us to see. The common wine drunk in Palestine or in Israel 
was that which was the simple juice, the simple juice of the grape. Now, when it's set for some time, this is so important for us to understand, when it's set for some time, it could ferment and become intoxicating. If it's set for some time, it could ferment, it could ferment and become intoxicating. But it was certainly, listen now, not like our wine today. It was certainly not like our wine today. You see, in our culture, in our culture, we use the word wine now to denote the kind of liquid which passes under that name in this country always containing a considerable portion of alcohol. Not only the alcohol produced by fermentation, but alcohol added to keep it or make it stronger. So once again, once again, it was certain not like our wine today because in our culture in our culture we use the word wine now to denote the kind of liquid which passes under that name in this country what we got to understand is always containing, always containing a considerable portion of alcohol. Not only the alcohol produced by fermentation, but alcohol added to keep it or make it stronger. Now, this is so very important for us to understand in this particular passage of scripture. And that is this, there is no evidence, there is no evidence of drunkenness in the wedding feast in our text. That's so very important for us to see, and that's so very important for us to understand, that there is no evidence of drunkenness in the wedding feast in our text. Once again, there is no evidence of drunkenness in the wedding fees in our text. Furthermore, sisters and brothers, it is unthinkable, it is unthinkable that Jesus would encourage drunkenness by making more intoxicating beverage. So once again, there is no evidence of drunkenness in the wedding feast in our text. Furthermore, it is unthinkable, it is unthinkable that Jesus or Christ would encourage drunkenness by making more intoxicating beverage. 
Now, what we got to understand is this truth. It is contrary to the teaching of both the Old and New Testament and Christ himself. Once again, it is contrary to the teaching of both the Old and New Testament and Christ himself. So if you don't mind, let's just look at a few scriptures concerning um, wine and, and drunkenness. Some people may often wonder why they see on places where you can go and get these various beverages, spirits. <laughs> well, what we got to understand is that there is a spirit attached to those beverages, be that as it may. There is a spirit attached to those beverages. And so what we want to do is look at a few scriptures concerning wine and, 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 and drunkenness. And so once again, you know, it's no way in this world that Jesus would have produced intoxicating wine. That's so very important for us to uh, see and to understand. So if you don't mind, turn to the book of Proverbs, please. And we're going to look at verse, uh, Proverbs chapter number 20. Proverbs chapter number 20. And we're going to look at verse 1. Now, when we read the Bible, we got to understand that this is the word of God. The Bible does not contain the word of God. The Bible is the word of God. And so God instructs us through his word. We don't have to uh, guess about this or guess about that. Uh, he, he informs us about certain things. And so what we're looking at now is wine and, 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 and drunkenness. All right, now note what uh, Proverbs chapter number 20 and verse number one says. It says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging. And whosoever is deceived thereby, note what God says, is not wise. So wine is a mocker. In other words, once that person comes under its control, it actually mocks them. It actually turns them into something else. For an example, uh, 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 before uh, they have a drink, they're just as quiet as they can be. But as soon as they begin to indulge in wine or whatever it might be, all of a sudden, everything changes. Whereas they were quiet now, hey! <laughs> they are under the influence of that beverage or under the influence of that wine. And so it actually mocks them. It actually mocks them because they are doing things that is under the wine's control. They are doing things that ordinarily they would not do. So God says wine is a mocker. And then he says, still talking about wine, 
strong drink, note, is raging. Strong drink is raging. And note what God says. And whosoever, note, is deceived, is deceived thereby, note what God says, is not wise, is not wise. Okay, uh, let's go to Proverbs, please, chapter number uh, 23, Proverbs chapter number 23, and uh, let's look at verses 20 and 21, Proverbs chapter number 23, and let's look at verses 20 and 21, and note what uh, God says, God says. Now God is speaking through his word. Are you there? Note what it says. Be not among wine bitters. In other words, do not associate with wine bitters. Verse 20, be not among wine bitters, among riotous eaters of flesh. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. In other words, do not associate with wine bibbers. Be not among them. Do not be not among them, nor among gluttonous eaters of meat. I was trying to look at my smaller notes. That's what I was trying to. <laughs> so, so in other words, do not associate with wine bibbers. Be not among them, nor among gluttonous eaters of meat. And note what verse 21 says, for the drunkard and the glutton and the glutton, note, note, shall come to what? Shall come to poverty and, and, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. The drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. I can remember, uh, you know, when I was working at the shipyard that the wives would come on the job and make sure that they would get their husband's check. Because if they didn't get their husband's check, they may not get much of anything. <laughs> because unfortunately, many of them had a drinking problem. And that's why, that's why the Bible says that, you know, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty because they are more concerned, unfortunately, about that uh, 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 stronghold in their lives. And, 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 and they can't break loose from that. Only the power of God can, can deliver that person out of that stronghold, out of that stronghold. All right, look at verses 30 through 32, please, in that same chapter, Proverbs 23, and please look at verses 30 through 32. Proverbs chapter number, 23 30 through 32. Now note what the inspired word of God say. It says, they, 
that tarry long at the wine. They that tarry long at the wine. Unfortunately, you know, uh, we have some people who are so bound by this that they begin in the morning with a drink. And throughout the day, unfortunately, they, 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 they deal with this. Now, now, now God is not uh, 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 against them. He, he, he wants to deliver them from that stronghold. And, and, and so, so these are people who tarry long at the wine. And that simply means that throughout the whole day, they spend their whole day, unfortunately, dealing with this situation, which is sad, which is sad. Now look what it says. They that tarry long at the wine, they that go to seek mixed wine, then it says in verse 31, look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. Now note what verse 32 says. At the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. And, and it's something, <laughs> when you look at the latter part of, 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 of verse number 31, because when you look at verse number 32, when it says, when it moveth itself aright, uh, uh, it, it, it's almost like saying, like, you know, there's, there's movement in there. Because verse 32 says, at the last, it biteth like a serpent and sting it like an adder. So that movement in that drink, it says, uh, uh, look not upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth its color in the cup, when it moveth itself. All right. But at the last, it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. It biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. All right, let's go to the uh, New Testament, please. Let's go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And we're going to look at verses 9 through 11. 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. And we're going to look at verses 9 through 11. Now Paul is speaking to the saints at Corinth. Now he's talking to the saints at Corinth. He's talking to believers. And so he says in verse number nine, first Corinthians beginning chapter six, beginning with verse number nine, he says, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God the unrighteous, the ungodly, those who do not know Jesus, those who have not accepted Jesus as their personal savior, they shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then it says, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adul adulterers, nor infiniment, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, 
nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And I'm glad, I'm glad that, 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 that Paul, under the inspiration of God, did not stop there. Because after he names all of these things, note what he says in verse number 11, and such were some of you, such were some of you, 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 were, you were like that before God saved you. And such were some of you, but notice that, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. Thank God for grace. Because after Paul lists all of those that we have just read in, 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 in verses nine and 10, he simply says, yes, you were like that, but you're not like that now. You're not like that now. He says, and such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, set apart. You have been washed in the blood of Jesus and you have now been sanctified, set apart by God and ye are justified. Other words, other words now God has declared you righteous, declared you righteous. Ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the spirit of our God. All right, I want to look at one more scripture because I don't want you to feel as though that I'm coming down hard on those who may be dealing with this kind of situation because all of us are struggling with something. There's nobody perfect in this world. There's only one person uh, uh, who walked this world walked in this world who was perfect, and that was Jesus Christ. And he came to save us, all right? Now, please turn to Ephesians, Ephesians chapter number five. And what I'm, what I'm bringing out is that, you know, the wine that Jesus made was not intoxicating wine, not intoxicating wine. All right, Ephesians chapter number five. Ephesians chapter number five. And please look at verse number 18. <laughs> Ephesians chapter number five and verse number 18. Note what it says, if you're there, Ephesians chapter number five and verse number 18. And it says, and be not, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. God says, it's excess. Be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but look at the contrast, but be filled with the spirit, but be filled with the spirit. Because just like a person is under the control of whatever beverage that they have consumed, God wants us to be under the control of his Holy Spirit. He wants us to be under the control of his Holy Spirit. Because we got the face of sisters and brothers, none of us can live the Christian life. None of us can. Only as we yield ourselves over to the Holy Spirit, he lives his holy life through us. He lives his holy life through us. And so God is instructing us that we should not be drunk with wine, but we should be filled with the Spirit under the Holy Spirit's, Holy Spirit's control. Amen. And I'm quite sure that, uh, you know, in 
all of your all of your lives you have witnessed how uh, certain people act when they are under uh, uh, certain beverages that they have drunk. They are completely under its control. Well, just like uh, they are under whatever beverage they have consumed and is now controlling them, God says, look here, I want you to be under my spirit's control. I want to control your actions, your thoughts, etc. Okay. So once again, it's so very important for us that the wine that Jesus made for that wedding feast was not intoxicating wine. It was not intoxicating wine. All right. Next, let's look at the uh, character of the world. The character of the world. The character of the world. So what do you mean by that? You see, uh, the habit of the world is giving the best wine first. Let me say that again. The habit of the world is giving the best wine first, then the lesser wine lasts. Instead of the other way around, which the miracle did emphasizes how the world in character contrasts with Christ. So once again, the habit of the world is giving the best wine first, the best wine first, then the lesser wine last instead of the other way around, which the miracle did, emphasizing Listen now, how the world in character contrasts with Christ. Once again, the habit of the world is giving the best wine first, then the lesser wine last, instead of the other way around, which the miracle did emphasizing how the world in character contrasts with Christ. Now, let, let's note some scriptures here. If you go over to uh, Proverbs, please, Proverbs chapter number four. Let's go back to Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, Proverbs chapter number Four, and we're going to look at verse 18 as well as 19. Proverbs chapter number four, and we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. Note what the scripture says. Proverbs chapter number four, and we're going to look at verses 18 and 19. All right, now verse 18 says, but the path of the just, that's, that's the believer, because we have been justified. We have been justified. God has declared us righteous. He has declared us righteous because of the finished work of Jesus on the cross. He has declared us righteous. So it says, but the path of the just is as the shining light, the path of the just, of the believer, is as the shining light, note, that shineth more and more, note, 
unto the perfect day. God who has begun a good work in us will complete it. God will complete the work that he has begun in us. So Proverbs says, but the path, the path that we are walking, the path of the just, the path of the believer is as the shining light. Note, that shineth more and more, that shineth more and more unto the perfect day, unto the perfect day. But note, but note what it says here, in verse number uh, 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 19, it says, but the way of the wicked is as darkness. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They know not at what they stumble. So we see, the path, the path of the righteous grows brighter and brighter, but the path of the wicked, note, grows darker and darker. So all the promises of sin, sisters and brothers, about a better life are phony. All the promises of sin, of sin about a better life are phony. Life only goes from bad to worse on the path of sin. So once again, all the promises of sin about a better life are phony, are phony. Now, let's face it, there is pleasure in sin, but it's only for a season. It's only for a season. And so the promises that sin makes to all of us the promises that sin makes to all of us, it, 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 it's phony. It's phony. It's phony. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. It doesn't add up. You see, life for the unbeliever only goes from bad to worse on the path of sin. Life only goes from bad to worse on the path of sin. But life gets better and better on the path of righteousness. For the believer, life gets better and better on the path of righteousness. And so what we have to understand, sisters and brothers, is that hell is the end of wickedness. Hell is the end of wickedness. But heaven is the blessed end of righteousness. Once again, hell is the end of wickedness but heaven is the blessed end of righteousness. Glory, hallelujah. It, it just reminds me of, 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 of Psalm 1. Uh, if you go over to Psalm 1, please. Psalm 1. Thank God that, you know, the path that we are on it's brighter and brighter. Psalm 1. It's a very familiar psalm. 
Psalm number one. I want you to see the uh, progression. I want you to see the progression uh, in this psalm. We're going to see the contrast. We're going to see the unbeliever, and we're going to see the believer, or we're going to see the ungodly, and we're going to see the godly, or we're going to see the um, uh, unrighteous, and then we're going to see the righteous. All right, now note what it says. It says, blessed. Blessed is the man. Now, now, now we're going to see some progression here. Blessed is the man, first of all, that walketh not in the counsel, the instructions, in the advice of the ungodly. So we see if, 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 if you got a little pencil, you can just, first of all, underline walketh. Blesses the man that walketh not in the counsel, in the instruction, in the, in, in the advice of the ungodly. Now, now here it is, nor standeth. Under word, underline that word standeth. Walketh. Now, now, now he's standeth. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Now, 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 now look at this now. He first was walking, then he was standing, but now look what he's doing. And sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So blessed is the man that walketh, that walketh not in the counsel, not in the instructions, not in the advice of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. He's talking about the ungodly person, the unrighteous person. But note, note what it says in verse number two. Look at the contrast. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Now, 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 that's such a beautiful picture because this tree is being flourished because it has been planted by the rivers of water. A great source, <laughs> a great source to draw from. The tree has been planted. This, 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 this is the picture of the, 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 the godly man. This is the picture of the righteous man. And when I say man, I mean men and, women, men and women. They are like a tree that has been planted. No, no, not just river, but by the rivers of water. No, no, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You're not going to miss your season. You're not going to miss your season because you have been planted by the rivers of water. And you're going to bring forth your fruit in its season. And note what else it says. His leaf also shall not wither. It's going to stay green. <laughs> His leaf also is not, shall not wither. And, and look, look, look now. And whatsoever, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now, now, now here's the contrast again. Here's the contrast again. You, you, can, you can look at verse one and you can now you can hook up with verse number four. The ungodly are not so but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Now, now back in that day, they, they would, in order to separate the wheat from the, from the chaff, they would, they would throw it up in the air 
and the wind would blow the chaff away because it was so light, but the wheat, the grain will fall to the ground, you see. And, and so, so, so God says, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff. No, which the wind driveth away. They don't have no substance. They don't have no weight. Note what God says now. Therefore, here it is, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Why? For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So once again, once again, uh, hell is the end of wickedness, but heaven is the blessed end of righteousness. Once again, uh, the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. But here's the other part. But it adds in verse number 18, 19, I'm sorry, the way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. That's why Jesus said that I am the light of the world. And he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Try to find something in the dark. Now go, go up to your bedroom and, and, and even though you are familiar, try to find something in the dark. You might even bump your toe on the side of the bed. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't find much. You know, you can't see much because it's dark. But to show you how powerful light is, all you have to do is switch, hit the switch. And the light comes on and what happened? The darkness dispels. Because light is greater. Light is more powerful than darkness. The darkness is still there. All you got to do is hit the switch again and, it, and the room will get dark again. <laughs> but when you hit the switch, you can see what you're looking for. You won't bump your big toe on the bed. You'll be able to see where you're going. You won't stumble because you, 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 you got the light. You got the light. That's why the Bible says the word of God is a, a light unto my path. You know, it's a light unto my path. You know, we, because we take steps one at a time. And, and God's word shines on our path and, and, and we can see where we're going. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Let's, let's, look at, let's look at the plainness, the plainness of the miracle, the plainness of the miracle, the plainness of the miracle, the plainness of the miracle. A noted bishop, a noted, a noted bishop uh, by the name of Bishop Rye said, the manner in which the miracle was worked deserves special notice. This is his comment. This is Bishop Rye. He said, the manner in which the miracle was work deserves special notice. This is his, this is his uh, comment. He says the, ma the manner, the manner, the manner in which the miracle was worked 
that is by Jesus, deserves special notice. And so this is his comment. He says, we are not told of any outward visible action. When we read St. John chapter number uh, two, and we look at verses one through 11, he says, we are not told of any outward visible action which preceded or accompanied it. So once again, he says, we are not told of any outward visible action that is by Jesus, which preceded or accompanied it. He says, it is not said that he touched the water pots. We don't see that in the scripture. We don't see that, right? So he says, it is not said that Jesus touched the water pots containing the water that was made wine. It is not said that he commanded the water to change its qualities. And certainly we don't see that in that chapter. We don't see that Jesus commanded the water to change its qualities or that he prayed to his father in heaven. We don't see no prayer in that chapter that Jesus prayed, right? He simply willed the change. He simply willed the change. So once again, this is what this bishop says. He said, he said, you know, the manner in which the miracle was worked deserves special notice. It deserves special notice because we are not told of any outward visible action which proceeded, preceded or accompanied it. It is not said that he touched the water pots containing the water that was made wine. We don't see that in that chapter. It is not said that he commanded the water to change its qualities. We don't see that in that chapter. We don't see that he prayed to his father in heaven. We, we don't see that in chapter number two, but he says, Jesus simply willed the change. He willed the change. And, and after he willed the change, it took place. After he willed the change, it took place. So the performing of this miracle, sisters and brothers, was characterized, characterized by plainness. The performing of this miracle, which was his first miracle, was characterized by plainness, by plainness. What do I mean by that? The ordinary dominated, the ordinary dominated. So filling the water pots, listen now, this is so important, was nothing spectacular. Filling the water pots was nothing spectacular. Taking from the water pots to the governor of the feast was also simple action. Once again, taking from the water pots to the governor of the feast was also simple action. There was no great announcement there was no great announcement, no prompt, 
no gathering of a great audience with some great pronouncements. Once again, there was no great announcement, no prompt, no gathering of a great audience with some great pronouncements. The miracle, the miracle that Jesus did was worked as quietly as possible or unostentiously. The miracle was worked as quietly as possible. Now, what do you mean by that? It was not intended to attract notice. It was not intended to attract notice. Let me just look on the flip side of this. Now, this is not, this is not going to happen at all. But, hey, I want all of you together. I'm getting ready to work my first miracle. You know, come, come. Go, tell everybody to come. I, I want them to see this. <laughs> he worked this miracle quietly. It was not intended to attract notice. You know, like some of us, hey, I'm getting ready to do something big. You know, <laughs> let me get on the phone. Let me put it in the paper. You know, let me let me sound this thing loud and clear. What I'm getting ready to do. I I, I'm, I want to cry. I, I I'm not just going to do this in the corner. <laughs> I want everybody to see this. This is my first miracle. I want everybody to see this. I know you. Those of you at the wedding. Uh, uh, take time now. Go, go, get, go get your sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles. Tell them to come here before I work this miracle. None of that. Because he did it not to attract notice. He did it quietly. He did it quietly. Uh, no problem. None of that. Now let's look at some scriptures, you know, to 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 back this up. To back this up, you know, Jesus willed uh, the change, and it took place, and 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 he did it quietly because he didn't attract notice at all as to what he did. Look at, please, go to Saint Matthew, please. St. Matthew, just to show you just a few scriptures uh, about what I just said, that his miracle did not intend to attract notice. St. Matthew, uh, chapter number eight, please. St. Matthew, chapter number eight. And I'm, I'm gonna read uh, verses one through four. St. Matthew chapter number eight and, and verse number four. Now notice uh, there was no great announcement that Jesus made when he performed this miracle. There was no prompt. There was no gathering of a great audience. There was no great pronouncements about what I'm getting ready to do. None of that. He did it quietly. Now, note what it says here, St. Matthew chapter number eight, uh, verses one through four. It says, when he, that is Jesus, was come down from the mountain, great multitudes or large crowds followed him. And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand. Note, he touched, he touched this leper. 
Jesus put forth his hand and touched him saying, I will, because he said, if thou will, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus says, I will be thou clean. And note what it says. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. Now note what Jesus says in verse number four. And Jesus saith unto him, now he just, he just performed this miracle. And note what Jesus said to him. Jesus saith unto him, see thou tell no man. <laughs> see thou tell no man, but go thy way, show thyself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Jesus said, don't tell nobody. Now, now, now that, if that would have been me or us, hey, tell everybody what I just did for you. <laughs> you know, don't you hold this thing to yourself. But Jesus, he, he, you see, you see, he, he wasn't seeking publicity. He, he, he did things quietly not to attract attention. He, now, 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 now the beautiful thing about this is that, you know, uh, if, 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 if another person touched a leper, they themselves would become unclean. Just like this uh, COVID-19 situation, if, if you're around somebody that has the, that, that has con con contact, has, has, has that, then they are able to pass that on to you. You know, so 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 if back in that day, if a person touched a leper, because that's why they was told to cry out unclean to warn people, because if they touched a leper, then they themselves would become clean. But here we see Jesus touched this leper and he didn't come, he didn't come unclean, he made the unclean clean. He made the unclean clean. It didn't affect him at all. He touched the leper. He touched him. Oh my, I tell you, it, it, it's something about the touch of Jesus. I tell you, if you've ever been touched by him, I tell you, he has a touch like no other. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy <laughs> that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know he touched me and made me whole. Can somebody say amen? <laughs> amen. He touched me. Amen. Woo! Jesus touched me, not just amen. that day and that day and time when he yes. touched the leper, amen. but one day he touched me. Yes. He amen. touched me. In, in, in 1963, Jesus touched me. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He touched mm. me and changed my life. Yes. There's something about his touch. Hallelujah. Nobody can touch you like Jesus. Because if he put his hands on you, yes. it's going to be a change. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a change. The leper said, Lord, if you will, Jesus says, I want to do this for your brother. Now, he didn't say that, but he said, I will <laughs> be thou clean. I will. And, 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 and immediately, the Bible says, and immediately, immediately, his leprosy was cleansed. And then Jesus said, look here now. See that tell no man. He's not seeking publicity. Like, uh, uh, I'm not speaking against this person, but this person that raises, that wears a white suit and he goes to all these great uh, stadiums mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and form miracles. He wears a white suit. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna leave that alone because somebody's saying, who, who, who's that? <laughs> He wears a white suit <laughs> and he goes to these various stadiums. You know what really gets me? What's that? 
is that if you have this, and, and, and I'm not knocking, I'm not knocking these men because you know, God gifts all of us. But if you have such a great anointing and a great gift, why don't you go to these hospitals? Why do people have to come to the stadium? Now I'm gonna leave that alone. I'm gonna leave that alone. Uh, but but uh, uh, can you delete that? <laughs> <laughs> delete, delete. Okay, okay. All right. Let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, let's go to uh, uh, Saint Matthew chapter number nine, because what I'm bringing out is this truth: that that Jesus did things quietly. He didn't do things to attract notice. All right. Uh, Saint Matthew chapter number nine, and let's look at verses twenty-seven through 31, 27 through uh, 31. St. Matthew chapter nine, verses 27 through uh, 31. All right, note what it says. And when Jesus departed thence, note two blind men followed him. Now, now that, that within itself, is something they're blind but they they're following jesus i guess i guess you know they they they, they hear the crowd so 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 they're able to follow because they they hear with their ears they following the crowd in the footsteps it says and when jesus departed them two blind men followed him crying and saying thou son of david have mercy on us and when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open. And Jesus straightly charged them, saying, See that no man know it. <laughs> See that no man know it. Now, 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 Jesus said, According to your faith, be it unto you. And see, what they did is that they attached their faith to the word of God. That's what brought it, that's what brought about this healing. They attached their faith to, to, to the word of God, to what Jesus said, because Jesus said to them, Jesus said to them, he said, believe ye that I am able to do this? Do you believe that I'm able to do this? And look what they said. They said, yea, Lord. Then Jesus touched their eyes saying according to your faith and according to the faith that you have put in what i said be it unto you and, and look what it says look at the results look at the results and their eyes were open their eyes were open and jesus straightly charged them saying see that no man know it but look what verse 31 says but they when they were departed, <laughs> spread abroad his fame in all that country. And you see the reason why that Jesus said, because multitudes were following them anyhow, you know. And, and so he had to go from village to village, city to city. He don't want to be hampered. You know, but what I'm seeing, what I'm saying is that you know, their faith was attached to what Jesus said. Their faith was, was attached to his word, his word. Because once again, I know I'm being repetitious. Jesus said, believe ye that I am able to do this? And they say, yeah, Lord. That was their faith in what Jesus just asked them. And because they said, yes, Lord, then he touched their eyes saying, no, he touched the eye and he said, according to what 
your faith be it unto you. And note what it says, and their eyes were open and Jesus strictly charged them saying, see that no man know it. I'm not looking for publicity, you know. I'm not looking for publicity. Let's look at one more, please. Uh, go to chapter number 12 in Matthew. Chapter number 12 in Matthew. And let's look at verses 9 through uh, 16. All right, St. Matthew chapter number 12, beginning with verse nine, and we're gonna read down to verse number 16. St. Matthew chapter number 12, verses nine through 16, reading. And when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him saying, and they asked him saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Now they, they asked them this question just to accuse him because they, 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 they know he can heal. <laughs> you know, they know he can heal, but, but they, they trying to trap Jesus. They trying to accuse him. That's why it says here, and when he departed from, when he departed thence, he went into, note, their synagogue. <laughs> Let me just pause here. You know, we got some people who think they own churches. Let me just put it this way. You got some families that run churches. <laughs> you ain't gotta say amen. You know, and, and, and when they call the pastor, the pastor got to, to deal with certain families that control churches. It's real. That's why some churches wait four and five years before they call a pastor, because they put everybody in place before they call somebody. And then when the pastor comes, God help him, because he had to deal with everybody that's been put in place all, all the power positions. <laughs> That's why the Bible said, taking the oversight, you got to take the oversight. And it takes a while to pastor. It takes a while to pastor because you got to deal with them other little pastors. I'm gonna leave that alone. <laughs> Let me, I know somebody say, move on, move on. I'm moving on. Nope. And, and, and verse nine again, and when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue, their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered, and they asked him saying, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days? No, they asked him this question that they might accuse him, that they might accuse him. And he said unto them, that is Jesus said unto them, what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep, and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day, will he not lay hold on it and lift it out? How much then is a man better than a sheep? How much then, how much then is a man better than a sheep? Wherefore, Jesus said, it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then saith he to the man, stretch forth thine hand. <laughs> and he stretched it forth, note what the Bible says, and it was restored whole, like as the other. Now, 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 do you think, do you think the religious leaders is gonna be happy about this? Because the reason why they raised the question about this is because they wanted to accuse him. Now look at their response. This man, this man has just been healed. His hand has been restored. And because Jesus did it on the Sabbath, 
Look at their reaction in verse number 14. But before we read that, Jesus said, now look here. If you had a sheep and it fell in the pit, wouldn't you, wouldn't you pull it out? Wouldn't you pull it out of the pit? And this man is, 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 is this man in a sense is in the pit. His hand is with him. In a sense, he's in the pit. And just like you would pull your sheep out of the pit, this man is in the pit. And even though you feel as though you feel as though that you wouldn't be uh, 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 going against the Sabbath, if you pull a sheep out of a pit, certainly I'm not going to be going against the Sabbath because I'm Lord of the Sabbath. And, and, and this man is in the pit. His hand is with it. Now, now, do you think that they would be happy? Look at, look at verse number 14. It says, then the Pharisees went out and held the council against him how they might destroy him. Religious people. It says in the Pharisees, these are religious people. It says, and the Pharisees went out and held the council against him how they might destroy him. And you'd be surprised, sisters and brothers, of all the uh, 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 silent councils that are being held in some of these churches. You ain't got to say amen. <laughs> and, 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 and this person don't like that person, this person don't like that person, but because we have a common enemy, so to speak, we both going to join together because we both don't like her. We both don't like him. him. It's real. Religious people. I'm not talking about saved people. I'm talking about religious people. There's a difference. Now, now, no, no, no. I can I amen, amen lights. Amen. Amen. Okay, amen. Thank you, Brother Rackley. Deacon Rackley. Look, look, now look at look at verse number 15. This is what I'm getting to. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him, and he healed, he no, he healed them all. But note what verse 16 says and charge them that they should not make him known. He, great multitudes followed him. No, and he, look, 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 look at what the scripture said. It says great multitudes followed him and he healed them all. Now we don't know the number of diseases that were among the, the multitudes, Maybe it's blind, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 deaf, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, we, we don't know. But the Bible says he healed them all. But what I'm getting at, he said, look here. He charged them, verse 16, he charged them that they should not make him known. I'm not seeking a reputation. I'm not looking for publicity. You know, like some of us you know we can't do things quietly we, we 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 got to do things to 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 make a name for ourselves you know we, we can't do things uh, uh uh without letting somebody else know what i just did jesus god in the flesh did not seek any kind of reputation he did things quietly. Amen. He did things quietly. Now, let, let me uh, conclude uh, by uh, 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 saying this. Let me conclude by uh, saying this. Um, Jesus made no parade about what he did. Jesus made no parade about it. And it does not even appear that he approached the water pots. Jesus made no parade about his first miracle. And it does not even appear that he approached the water pots. We don't see none of that in, 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 in uh, St. John chapter number two. None of that. He didn't approach the water pots. He didn't touch the water pots. And as I forestated, what did he do? He just willed the change. And the water turned to wine. The water turned to wine. 
Jesus made no parade about it. And it does not even appear that he approached the water pots. He willed it and it was done. Jesus willed it and it was done. D-O-N-E. It was done. done. All right. I'm going to uh, end here. And if the Lord is willing, we'll pick up uh, with this uh, next week. But I certainly want to thank those of you uh, who are uh, on Zoom with us and those of you who are online. Uh, certainly uh, thank the Lord for your presence tonight. And hopefully you've gotten something out of uh, this study. Um, and I trust that, uh, you know, the Lord has been glorified. Once again, thank you for uh, your presence. And once again, son, thank you for uh, making this possible. Thank you for your expertise. It certainly is uh, greatly appreciated. And so uh, with that, uh, I'm just going to uh, end with prayer. And Father, we just thank you for what has been said tonight. And we trust that everything that has been said has been pleasing in your sight and that it has brought strength and enlightenment uh, uh, to your people. And we ask your continuous blessings upon us. And we ask it all in your name. Amen. God bless Amen. you. And uh, good night once again. Bye. So glad to have you with us. And have a good and safe night. You too, Pastor. Good Thank you. Everybody. Good night. Be blessed. Good night. All right. <laughs>